Blog Talk Radio. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you very much for giving me this one hour with you to discuss some of the major issues of our day, some of the major issues in politics of our day. As you know, we are in a state of, I don't have to tell you what state we're in right now. So thank you very much for being a part. You know, I had a great 4th of July. I hope that you did as well. Had a great 4th of July. Uh, the Kingwood Area Democrats, CAD, worked hard this week. We, we built a float. The first time we got together and built a float to be a part of the parade, to be a part of this democracy. And you know what? It paid off. We won the most traditional float. In the blog post that I have for the show, I made a little video of how we went from pieces of wood to the float to winning and to marching in the parade. It's kind of a fun thing, so check it out. I have a link to it in the blog post. Anyway, I spent a lot of time speaking to some of my Tea Party friends from the booth and realized there is a lot of work to be done, folks. It, it made my Sunday front page article on Daily Coast that much more prescient. Uh, I titled that one, Being an American Citizen is, a, is Complicated. But the major subject that I want to cover today is a uh, piece. The Coffee Party USA member, her name, Mindy Smoke, sent me an, artic- sent me an article that she wrote after the Hobby Lobby case. Party member, I am just sharing my opinion and voice, Minda Smoke said, hoping it would, it can provide some thought and idea. So she sent, just sent us something, you know, this has been on, had been on her mind and she sent it to us as a member wanting to, you know, just kind of put her piece out there. But suffice it to say, I enjoyed her thoughts and opinions and asked her for permission to post for all to see. She graciously told me that she, she acceded to us posting it. So please read it, share it. Let us know your thoughts and opinions, and I want to cover that today. But before that, I want to do my reading on on the Daily Coast um, front page. I think it's going to be dropping, I believe, tomorrow at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time on the front page of dailycoast.com. But here goes the reading. I'll do it rather quickly because I really want to read her piece. Because her piece is what really of uh, most pre present with what occurred this week and what actually occurred on Thursday as well, but here it goes. Whenever 4th of July rolls around, most Americans wrap themselves in it is a patriotic gesture that both natives, past immigrants, and current immigrants make. While there are some, specifically those on the right and Tea Partiers, that attempt to wrap themselves in the flag throughout the year, most use the Independence Day celebrations to do so. They do it to honor the country they call home. They do it to honor the country that, they, that, that is their livelihood. This day, however, should be a time of reflection. What does it mean to be an American? Does American citizenship mean the same to everyone? Does everyone mean the same to America? Is America really exceptional? Being America means one lives in the country with the most powerful military. It means living in a country that ultimately controls the world's economy. With that power comes a responsibility that over the last few years were not used wisely. In fact, both the military and the financial sector were instrumental in the unnecessary deaths of thousands and near-world economic collapse. Being an American means 
bearing the weight of these bad deeds whenever traveling abroad and professing the intrinsic love for this country. Being an American citizen means different things to different people. For many nth generation white Americans, it is, it is a birthright even as they are blinded from the suffering of the natives whose land was taken, the blacks who were enslaved for profit, and the Chinese and indentured servants whose labor was exploited. For the American natives, one can understand why many feel it is they that are the true Americans and stewards of the land. For blacks, in as much as, uh, as, in as, much, as much of the economy was built on their free labor for centuries, they are made to feel a notch less. And for most non-white or non-black Americans, they are still asked, where are you from? Many buy into Alexis de Tocqueville's notion of American exceptionalism. For the masses in America and throughout the world, it just isn't so. For what most Americans learn about America is a reality devoid of perspective. It does not matter what Americans say about America. It matters what others think of America based on America's actions. America was founded by immigrants who came to, the, to a foreign land and took it all forcefully. How then can America be exceptional when instead of atoning for said act, it then tries to keep those attempting access to a better life out with politically driven angry mobs, as, as what is occurring in today's in California and other parts of this country, who are denying these people who are suffering in their own countries access to what others came here to originally when they suffered the same fate. Being an American citizen is complicated. One is proud of what is atten attained under the red, white, and blue. Americans have been to the moon. America has a presence throughout the ocean, continent, planet, inner and outer space. One is proud to be in a country capable of projecting ultimate power. Many Americans often feel a sense of superiority when traveling abroad. Yet, it is lacking of humility that may be what really haunts America, for America is not really one nation under God. America is all nations. It is that America comprises the best of all nations that make it great. It is that America still has a grassroots that continues to fight to not make America what it was or is, but what America is to be. So, after all, America cannot be considered exceptional now to many, not even with the, the, the Tocqueville's shallow and antiquated definition of exceptionalism. That said, all Americans working together, that mosaic from around the world, just may make it so. That mosaic, that from everyone, that really makes what America is, national nation we all talk about. So that room, uh, that some thought, give that some thought. But, the subject at hand today is really about an article written by a coffee party member. Her name, uh, I hope, I, I think I sent it, well, I'm pretty sure I sent an email uh, to her, letting her know that we're, we're featuring her article on the coffee party website, and it has actually blown up the website and that a lot of people seem to like the article and they're reading the article. They're actually reading the article. One of the issues on Facebook is, People look at the taglines and they look at it and they just kind of comment on just the tagline. Other people comment on the tagline after reading the article. They find the article substantive. Well, it seems like many Coffee Party members and members around the Internet have found her article, talking about Mindy Smoke's article, quite enlightening. So I decided to make that the topic of discussion and here goes her article. There will be undoubtedly, this is, this is her article, there, is, there, there will be undoubtedly be much flurry of activities amongst political bloggers on talk shows on Facebook, even in the hallways of some companies about the Supreme Court's decision in the Hobby Lobby case. There will be ire and much dissension raised over religious rights, women's rights, abortion, contraception, when can an egg be fertilized, what procedures are specifically involved, what the decision means now, what the decision could mean in the future. Conservatives and liberals will fling insults at each other. Pro-life and pro-choice will get out their messages and galvanize their troops at lightning speed. 
The whole pro-life versus pro-choice language really irks me. But what is a topic? But that is a topic for another day. There are four main reasons that everyone, regardless of their religious and contraception beliefs, should be terrified by this decision, though. The Supreme Court has said closely held companies and the court system can determine very specific medical procedures they will and will not support. Your health care decisions and access are now privy to your company's discretion and potential court proceedings. Privacy in medical conditions and health care or care has just become much more limited for those who think this affects a very small percentage of people. Closely held companies make up 90% of companies and employees, 52% of employed Americans. Even more is corporations who employs over 70,000 is a closely held company. Scottus, the Supreme Court of the United States, may have said their decision is only applicable to the specific procedures involved in, in the case. However, you can bet that other companies who do not want to cover other types of procedures due to whatever reasons will try to say due to the religious values they should not be compelled to cover the procedure. Circumcision, blood transfusion, IVF, hysterectomies, vasectomies, and disease treat stem cell therapies. Those have been condemned by certain religious groups and fractions. Some religious groups even de denounce medical intervention of, at all. They believe God will heal it that tended. What about health coverage for same-sex partners? Companies are not required to cover same-sex partners yet, but as rulings legalizing same-sex marriages continue to gain steam and marriages are legalized, they will have to just the same as any other spouse. Could a company say, I don't religiously believe that some same-sex marriage, so I don't want to support the non-employee partner through health care benefits. Folks, I see the calls in. I'll be with you guys shortly after reading her excellent piece. What about pregnancy of women who are not named? Sex outside of marriage is a sin in many religions and really expensive to companies to cover as well. It may seem far-fetched to you. However, read the Supreme Court ruling again. The Supreme Court ruled Monday that closely held corporations cannot be forced to pay for their employees' birth control. If they have religious objections, replace birth control with any other medical procedure or benefits I have mentioned above kind of easily slips in there, doesn't it? The decision will not will open the floodgate. Not not the decision will open the floodgate to groups and companies to challenge other benefits. The Supreme Court has sanctioned religious discrimination in the application of benefits for closely held companies in America. For the first time ever in the history of the Supreme Court, has, it has ruled that profit-seeking businesses can hold religious views under federal law. You really link, you really think special interests will let this stay at just the level of the ruling today? How far can it extend? Let's say a family who practices Hinduism runs a company. They do not believe in taking any medical products that are created from animal byproducts. For example, many people who practice the Hinduism faith will not use insulin that is from animal byproducts. Therefore, the owner may decide they will not support any medicines employees take use that are from animal byproducts. Is that a reasonable religious objection? Who decides? Do they go through a, a big court battle? What do the employees do in the meantime? Should the company be able to investigate the sources of every medical product they subsidize for their employee? As Justice Ginsburg said, in the court view, RFRA demand accommodations of a for-profit corporations, religious beliefs, no matter the impact that accommodation may have on third parties who do not share the corporation's owner's religious is no accountability standards or regulations that accommodate the decision. What constitutes a religious objection and how can a company prove its religion? Could the two owners of a company one day say they have taken up the Buddhist religion and since Buddhism prohibits the taking of intoxicated, uh, taking of intoxicating substances and focuses on the importance of spiritual health, they will not support the use of pharmaceuticals uh, for depression, but will instead support medication or meditation practices for their employees suffering from depression? Again, as Justice Ginsburg pointed out, religious organizations exist 
to foster the interests of persons subscribing to the same religions and faith. Not so for profit corporations, workers who sustain the operations of those corporations commonly are not drawn from one religious community. Indeed, by the law, no religion-based criterion can restrict the workforce of for-profit corporations. Religious and non-profit organizations are required to go through processes, regulations, auditing, and so forth to ensure their compliance with the laws, allow, allowing religious exemptions. I guess for-profit companies do not have to do the same. Hobby Lobby has hardly shown their consistency. Probably very few. Are our right to follow our religious beliefs to medical privacy to make up our health decisions more important than the owner's religious beliefs, according to the Supreme Court? The owner's religious beliefs trump all. For 52% of working Americans, they should be terrified. Because what seems so far-fetched is not anymore. Let's be clear. This is about company rights over workers. Finally, I saw on post on a post someone said, if you owned a company, wouldn't you want to be able to run it by your religious beliefs and not have to compromise them? If I ran for a profit, if I ran a for profit company, I would want to honor my beliefs and the legal system that was not allowed religious discrimination until now. Honor my employees' right to their own religious beliefs and keep my expectations to a professional manner that attracts the most talented employees, provide a respectful environment, and makes customers feel valued. If you own a for-profit company not founded for religious purposes, your religion is yours. Forcing it on your other 10 to or 10,000 employees is not what our founding fathers ever intended. It is actually quite the opposite. And I will come to your call right now. I see my friend, John, is on. John? Good afternoon, Egberto. How are you doing? All right. Talk to me, John. Yeah, I just want to, first of all, I want to recommend uh, your show on uh, KPFT. You did an excellent show on Monday that covered uh, this very well. So uh, if anybody wants to to hear the initial response, which happened on Monday night, uh, I recommend you go to robertowillies.com and listen to the the podcast from uh, the show on Monday. Uh, I don't want to repeat a lot of, of what I said, but, you know, the main thing, and I think you agreed with this, that this is, that I would like to try to get across is this is mainly a political decision because there are about uh, 50 other cases in the, uh, the the workload that are that are coming through the Supreme Court uh, with similar or through the, through the court system with similar ideas uh, and trying to dismantle the ACA. Uh, this is. A couple of things that I didn't talk about on Monday that I'd like to bring up concerning the case. This is uh, dealing with the sincerity of, of the employer's religious beliefs, which which the Supreme Court really didn't address at all. Now, if you're a nonprofit, uh, you are able to to get these. You're you're able to you know essentially do what what the Hobby Lobby case also did. And I don't I don't agree with that either. I think if if you're a, a nonprofit, you still should have to follow the rules of the law. So, I mean, essentially, I Absolutely. I uh, disagree with that opinion also. But that being said, you know, who is to say whether somebody is sincere in their religious beliefs? They may just be saying this just because it'll it will cost them money, you know, if they cover all of this. And so this could just be a, a way of financially taking this out. Uh, another thing uh, that the Supreme Court didn't address concerning uh, the case is is whether people should be able, the companies could opt out of the ACA completely. And this is from uh, the Stephanie Mensimer article in Mother Jones uh, on uh, earlier. I think it was a couple months ago. It it, this, it quotes Marty uh, Lederman, a, a Georgetown law professor. He suggested the lower courts 
have misread the contraceptive mandate case by assuming firms such as Hobby Lobby had two choices, provide birth coverage or pay huge fines to fit to violate their religious belief. He argues that while the ACA requires individuals to purchase health insurance, it doesn't require employers to provide it. If companies choose to do so, then the insurance companies must cover contraception without copays. Hobby Lobby and other companies currently suing the Obama administration can resolve their problems by simply jettisoning their health insurance plans and letting their employee purchase coverage through the exchanges. And so, I mean, this is a very relevant point because they could just say, okay, I don't I don't want to, to deal with this. Get get your insurance through the exchanges. And companies like Trader Joe's did do that for, with their part-time employees, and uh, it helped actually a lot of people get out of what they call job lock. And I know you've talked about this before to where you want to see uh, – Right, the uh, employment decoupled from insurance, and so that's what the ACA is helping to do. And so, so those are a couple of points about that. Also, I want to talk a little bit about the Wheaton case that uh, was decided on Thursday. The, the Wheaton case is terrible. I, you're so right. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, John, because I was going to talk about, it, but I'd let you fly with that. That was. That just proves the, the escalation that this is going to bring. But go ahead, my friend. Yeah, it says uh, this is a this is actually from Politico. It says uh, the Supreme Court ruled Thursday that Wheaton College doesn't have to abide by the Obamacare uh, contraceptive coverage requirement as long as the, the Christian school tells the Obama administration that it has a religious objection to providing birth control to its employees and students. The order from a, a six to three court with a scathing dissent. May, may foreshadow the second round of legal battles expected to take place in the Supreme Court later this year. On Monday, the court ruled that Hobby Lobby case that closely held companies could be exempted from the contraception mandate uh, if their owners had religious objections. Now, this, these are some quotes from uh, Sonia Sotomayor and her uh, dissent. He says, those who are bound by our decisions usually believe that they can take us at our word, not so today. After expressingly relying on the availability of the religious nonprofit accommodation to hold the contraceptive coverage, requirement violates the Religious Freedom Restoration Act as applied to uh, closely held for profit corporations. The court now as the dissent in Hobby Lobby feared it might, retreats from that position. Let me make let me be absolutely clear. I do not doubt that Wheaton genuinely believes that signing this self certification form is contrary to its religious beliefs, she wrote. But thinking one's religious beliefs are substantially burdened, no matter how sincere or genuine that, that belief may be, does not make it so. So just to, to go back on this, they they don't even want to fill out the form to, to essentially uh, go through the process of saying, you know, are you sincere in your in your beliefs as a nonprofit? They they don't even want to do that at all. And so what the Supreme Court has said is, uh, yes, uh, you you don't have to fill that out. And uh, you know, later it's going to go before the court. Uh, but I mean, basically, uh, do you see the the Roberts Five changing their? Uh, decision on this very unlikely and so but all I, of these I, cases I'm curious because i i'm curious did did i hear uh that that was only that wasn't a case that was just an opinion right that that they, that they took to the supreme court is that correct um uh, well no i i think it's uh i don't think it was actually before the supreme court yet uh it, it it's supposed to right it, the, the, it says this is a, the foreshadow of the second round of legal battles expecting quarter, uh, court next year. So essentially, you know, they 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 don't want to even have to fill out a form, like I said earlier. And they and the Supreme Court said, yeah, you don't have to fill out a form. All you got to do is tell the Obama administration that you have a religious objection, and that's it. I mean, right. <laughs> there's no, you know, I mean, like I said, this goes back to the the whole point of. If they, people just want to save money, they can do that. But I mean, what they do will have to deal with, though, is the the, the pushback. And there's a, already a lot of people who are boycotting Hobby Lobby and who are, you know, uh, saying to boycott all of these other companies. There was a great post on Daily Kos 
uh, there, there are about 50 different cases dealing with this uh, to one degree or another. And, uh, you know, I just, I just believe that this is a way that you can express your opinion financially by boycotting these companies and saying we don't agree with, with the fact that you're, you don't want to abide by the law and the fact that the Supreme Court uh, is so, so politically oriented that they don't really care about, you know, the, about the precedent, uh, just makes it, you know, more extreme. And so, John, I you know, tell you what, you're correct. You're correct. I was in a, the 4th of July parade yesterday and afterwards we talk, spoke to a whole lot of people. Folks that aren't necessarily democratic or folks that aren't necessarily liberal, and it's really having an impact on women because women are of all stripes are starting to see themselves in a position of of uh, of disadvantage now. I mean, a lot of people look at the contraception issue as if it's a religious issue. They don't realize, most importantly, it is an economic issue. But stay with me, John. I have a call at six zero two that I need to go to six zero two. Who do I have the honor to speak with? Hi, this is Mindy Smoke. Oh, great. Uh, folks, this is Mindy Smoke online. Mindy Smoke is the young lady who wrote that great article that I read and I posted at Coffee Party uh, USA and on my blog site. Let me tell you, uh, Mindy, your article is so very well received. It is going hidden some interesting numbers. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us how and why you wrote this article. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Yes, I I wrote it really just, I guess, well, because, you know, I was affected by the decision more in terms of not just being a woman, but I, you know, I really feel I'm an employee and I'm a worker and, you know, I've been working for years and years and years and I've been blessed to have worked for very great companies who I think take very good care of their employees. And I know not everybody has that, has that pleasure or, you know, is able to work for companies that always treat them well. And I just, to me, it wasn't just about being a woman. It was about being an American. And I've always felt religious freedom means you can practice your religion and you don't have to be forced to practice somebody else's. And so that's what really struck me about the case is um, that, you know, you shouldn't be forced to practice somebody else's religion. And um, I don't... You know, as a company, there's so many people that work there and so many different viewpoints. Even among Christians, there's different viewpoints or Buddhists and who's, whose viewpoint is right. And I just, and also the other thing that really bothered me is that there's just really no accountability or regulation with it. What constitutes a religious belief? What constitutes a deeply held and or, uh, or an objection? So I just really felt like it was violating to me what's the core of America and it's the freedom to be who we want and practice where we want. And that's what really bothered me. And, you know, there's lots of religious organizations that are nonprofit, and I think this isn't fair to them either because they, they have certain regulations they have to go through and certain things that they have to do to, you know, to prove that they're complying with the regulations to be a nonprofit religion. And I think that, you know, they, they go through a lot to maintain who they are, and I don't think it's really fair to say a private company doesn't have to do the same thing, um, that they can just say, I have a religious objection to anything they want, and that's what really kind of struck me and scares me about the decision. So that's now, let me tell me you, when, what, let me tell you, what, when I um, got the, the email with, with your piece, right, I mean, uh, it, it is amazing how you expressed it, uh, expressed a whole lot of what I w wanted to say before, because... What I find is you were absolutely correct in the beginning of your piece. There was going to be a whole lot of hyperventilating on all sides about the case. They were going to try to put it into only a context on war on women type context, which uh, I think was the, 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 the biggest push, the biggest political push, sort of a war on women. But I think you, uh, you expressed a much deeper point when, when you tell, in effect, telling folks, hey, it's not only women that need to be scared about where this, the direction of where this is going. Everybody needs to be scared on, on the direction. Is that how? Uh, is, is that is that the the, 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 the the cut the real message that you wanted to get across there? Yes, yes, I think it has the potential to affect everybody. 
in, in some way or another. I like the way you brought brought in the issues of the Buddhists, the way you brought in the issues of, of um, somebody who practiced Hindu. I mean, it, once you step on this particular mi- in this particular minefield, you really hit some difficult areas because, as you said, insulin can come from animals, animals that some religions may object to. Then again, some people believe that God is the only healer, and as such, well, if if you believe that, it gets into a whole can of worms that don't really belong there. So I think it it was great the way you captured it in four different tenets within your paper. And, and that that's what I really like, the way you separate it into these are the four major issues that we really should all be looking at. What say you? Oh, thank, thank you. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, just like I said, I just really felt strongly that it's not, it doesn't go with the, you know, the way the America that I believe in, the way I grew up about, you know, kind of my parents were very much like you judge others by how they treat themselves and treat and treat other people and that's it there's no there's no other way to judge people whether it's in their workplace or in their life or whatever and so it just really made me feel like it was decision was against what I believe in as a person um, and so and those four areas particularly scare me so that's why I wrote it so thank you for acknowledging it I really appreciate it well, I mean, like I said, I think it's an article that everybody should read. I, I mean, and, and most importantly, um, it is coming from somebody who has it heartfelt. You know, we have a lot of, in the blogosphere and on, online and so forth, we have a lot of writings from the professionals that are out there, the professional politicos that are doing their thing. I think uh, we have to do more of what we're doing here at Coffee Party and in other places and, and, and really get in the voices of the people who these things are materially affecting to articulate what they want to say. Because a lot of times what those people that you're seeing on Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, or whatever, they're articulating these views from some sort of an antiseptic form that really, you know, it, 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 it is just a whole, a lot of times a whole lot of noise. And uh, that, I don't want to really put it all down to noise, but they put it in a fashion that doesn't really mean a whole lot to a whole lot of people as it would mean coming from somebody like you or from some of our other coffee party members or from a John who's out there really being a part of the system. So, I mean, I, I really appreciate that you actually uh, became a part of this discussion and, and put yourself out there. And as you can see, uh, you know, your your paper is generating a whole lot of activity. Well, thank you, and you're, you're welcome. And I guess the only other thing I wanted to say is, you know, I'm, I'm no religious expert, and so... Examples I put in there may not, you know, not to be 100% accurate, but I wanted to put in things that, you know, maybe people just don't think about outside of, you know, it's just easy to think, well, this is a, a Christian issue or um, a Catholic issue or a Jewish issue. There, like you said earlier, there's a lot more to it. There's so many different beliefs. And the other thing I think that compelled me to try to write something is, um, you know, I have a, I have a five-year-old daughter, and really in the last couple of years I've been trying to live by the, the quote, um, be the change that you wish to see in the world, so I could be an example for her. And so, you know, when there's things that I just don't feel are right, I feel if, if I don't lend my voice and get involved, I'm not going to be part of trying to make the world a better place for my daughter. And that's part of, I guess, why I wrote that, is, you know, she's, she's going to go in the working world one day, and I want it to be a place where as long as she does the best she can and is a, you know, professional and good person and, um, you know, kind of makes her way in the world that she's got an equal chance and doesn't have to worry about somebody doesn't like her religion or the color of her skin or the fact that she's a woman or whatever. If she's a good, if she's a hard worker and a good person and she's smart, then I just want her to have an equal chance. And I want everybody to have that equal chance. And that's, I guess, the, the main, the final reason why I wrote that. From your ear, I mean, from your lips to my ears to America's ears. I mean, that is that is so true. Now, I have another caller. Stay with me, Mindy, in case he has something okay. for you. But let's go sure. to uh, 620. Who do I have the honor of speaking with? Okay, this is Jack Golding. And, uh, Jack Golding, talk to me, my friend. Yeah. Okay, I have uh, uh, several opinions on that. Uh, darn, darn issue. First of all, contraception it's not abortion. 
that's what they're trying to get at. And uh, they're not going to be killing any babies over contraception, if I'm not mistaken. And most people uh, mistake miscarriage for abortion, too. Because I had a third uh, child, okay, a third, well, okay, I'm 83 years I old. Can't. And this goes back to uh, 1966, uh, 1967, before uh, sex of, of a child could be determined. And uh, and my uh, first son says, well, it's a girl. You can be sure about that because sex was not determined. Uh, I have two boys. And, right. Uh, Third one could have been a boogie guy. So my first son said it could have been a girl. And uh, he said, uh, how do you know that? Because uh, sex was not determined. I mean, you couldn't prevent certain things back in the 60s. Right. Okay. Now, the, th- now the thing uh, that, uh, of, of Hobby, uh, okay. Uh, really Hobby Lobby. Talk about talk about talk about religion now. Uh, all right, you, you want to go? Uh, uh, I, I read through the Supreme Court decision, and I heard about it on the news. And they said, "Oh, er, everything but but that." Uh, okay, the uh, uh, about the Jehovah's Witnesses and that uh, you won't they can't uh, do uh, blood tests or something blood like that. Blood transfusion. Yeah. Yeah, blood transfusion. And uh, I mean, that's all baloney. I opened up a whole can of worms with this religion bit. Uh, and uh, I, I say, no, uh, do not. Uh, uh, so then, Jack, I, yeah, I, I, I think, think if I'm on the need, Jack, abortion can be considered. Right. All that stuff uh, is a waste. Because exactly. Most people exactly. Just, just don't give a darn about about social issues. And Jack, I can argue that. I think so. Jack, I think you under. I think you pretty much agree with uh, Mindy Smoke, and I think that is so important. Uh, her story is so important. Now, it, it, it is interesting that even in in our chat room, we have somebody who just says, "I love that woman." So, uh, so Mindy, your 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 commentary is is really getting you know anybody everybody that I've gone to so far both on 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 my side on the coffee party site it's uh, it's all great kudos now you have anything to add to that John and folks do remember the call in number is 646-929-2495 again that number is 646-929-2495 do you have any questions that you'd like to ask Mindy but John what are your thoughts yeah, I, I just want to go back to one thing we talked a little bit about on on uh, Monday that uh, that Jack just talked about. You know, the the argument. This is another thing that the Supreme Court didn't didn't really consider the actual science of what the argument was. The argument that they were saying was they they were opposed to these these four items because they caused abortions and what the I'm trying to find the word here. They're ab- aborta. And I can't find it, but anyway, they're essentially saying that they that they performed abortion. And I went on a, a lengthy thing uh, on uh, on Monday about how how people don't believe that the scientific community doesn't believe that, and even people in Europe, like the uh, the German Catholic Church, once they were they looked at the uh, the evidence here. That they they also could said that these items don't they don't uh, they're not they don't have abortion these aren't abortions this is birth control so the art the the actual argument in it in itself is ridiculous so you have three different points you have the the non scientific angle the fact that they could have not provided health care at all and let their employees to go through the ACA and for health insurance and. Uh, and also, they didn't look at the sincerity of their religious beliefs. Uh, one thing I talked about at the end of the show about Santorum, uh, tr- uh, you know, saying that all birth control uh, was was bad and uh, was against his uh, religious beliefs. 
uh, the next day on Tuesday, what the Supreme Court came out and saying it wasn't just those four items, which were the the two uh, IEDs that they previously didn't cover in their health care uh, their their program before the ACA, and uh, the uh, the morning after pill and Ella. Those are the four items that they didn't cover. And so uh, they said that all 20 items, all 20 birth control uh, contraceptive items for for women are, you know, are uh, essentially part of this. And so they already expanded it the next day. I was just talking about how this could possibly be expanded. And the next day they expanded it to to every you know con- form of contra not every form of contraception but every form of women's contraception that could be covered so you know this is this is really amazing and i also just want to go back to the point that this is political and i also want uh, i want to talk a little bit about uh, an article by peter uh, montgomery in the huffington post it says supreme court justice samuel alito ended the supreme court session with a bang writing the majority opinion in two cases that gave the for-profit corporations the right to make religious liberty claims to evade government regulation and set the stage for fulfillment of a central goal of the right-wing political movement the destruction of public employee unions neither of these decisions was particularly surprising. Samuel Alito is the single most pro-corporate justice uh, and on the most pro-business court since the New Deal. And this this was uh, this is something that was put out. I saw it on uh, Think Progress, where they had all who who voted with the Chamber of Commerce, who, which is the biggest pro-business uh, you know movement and uh, organization in the country, and Alito was right at the top. Of course, all of the five appointed Republican justices were right around from 72% to 74%, siding with corporations, siding with big business. So it says, still, Alito's one-two punch was rather extraordinary milestone for the strategists who have been working for the past 40 years to put family business uh, firmly in the driver's seat of American politics. There's a strong case to be made that it began in earnest the 1971 memo by Lewis Powell, which you've spoken about extensively yes. in many of your shows, who argued that the American businesses were losing public support and called for a massive continuing campaign to wage war on leftist academics, progressive non profit groups and politicians. The memo by Powell, who was later appointed to the Supreme Court via a nomination by Richard Nixon, inspired uh, a few very wealthy men like Adolph Coors, uh, John M. Olin, and Richard Mellon Schaaf, who set about uh, creating a a series of think tanks, endowed academic uh, chairs, law schools, and right-wing legal groups, including the Federalist Society, which has nurtured Alito's career. Uh, chief among the right wing's uh, movement tactics have been building su- uh, sufficient political power to achieve ideological dominance over the federal judiciary. As activists like uh, Richard Vagary uh, recruited foot soldiers to help win elections for the GOP, the Federal Society built the intellectual foundations for an extreme conservative legal movement that would gain traction when its members won confirmation to the net federal bench. That process began in earnest in the Reagan administration and reached new heights during the George W. Bush administration with the ascendance to the Supreme Court of John Roberts and Samuel Alito. And so, Absolutely. you know, one thing uh, that ahead, people ahead, need need to uh, think about is how is this going to change, you know? And since this is, you know, primarily, in my opinion, a political decision, I think the only way that this is going to change is if you have political answers for political decisions. And so people should be more involved in politics and should be, you know, making sure that they vote for people that are going to uh help uh you know elect uh what what I consider uh you know to, are going to help their cause, which I which I consider electing Democrats. Because if you if you look at this, I mean, all the split is always five four between the Republican nominated uh, uh, justices and uh, the the Democratic justices, and so I how wanna, is this want, going to I change? Wanna to I want to add to that. It's, it's important. You said electing Democrats is 
It's not only about electing Democrats, it's electing real progressives that look out for women, that look out for the middle class, for, for all these different issues. And why that is so important is because, and you know, at Move to Amend, we created a documentary, we made a documentary called Legalized Democracy. And what we showed in that documentary is that if you follow the timeline, what you find is that as, pop, as, as populist movements grew to give Americans more rights to their democracy, to give Americans more democracy, the only way to control that then was through, and to control that legally per se, was to do that through the Supreme Court. Why? Because it's, it's the interpreter of the laws created by Congress to be executed by the executive, the president. So if you can't win via the, popul via the popular vote, if you cannot win via the electorate or those representing the electorate, the next way that you do it is for businesses to sue the government and this then be resolved within the Supreme Court, which then, in effect, interprets the law to the satisfaction of course, the oligarchy, however you want to call it, and in so doing, creating new laws from a what? L constitutional perspective. It is a dangerous position that we're in, and your answer is exactly the right answer. People must get engaged. We must get hundreds of thousands, millions more of Mindy smoked out there. Mindy, what say you? Yes, I think, you know, definitely people need to make their voices heard. Um, they need to, and the most important voice, obviously, is voting. Uh, and there's other ways. There's writing in, there's doing letters, there's gathering signatures, there's doing protests. And someone mentioned, you know, boycotting some of their organizations. I actually have eaten eaten foods in the past because I like the uh, more organic natural foods. But they're part of this lawsuit, too. And their owner said... He doesn't want it. The government can tell him to, with well, something like give his employees birth control or Jack Daniels or whatever. He doesn't care. They can't tell him what to do. So he's obviously cloaking his anti-government issues in this religion bill. And so I'm not going to eat eating foods anymore. There's lots of ways to make your voice heard. You know, voting, writing, um, doing petitions, doing protests, doing boycotts. It's all about you know living to you know, living to your beliefs and I'm not I'm not gonna eat even foods anymore because he's part of this lawsuit and he's obviously using religion to try to get out of uh for his anti government stance more than really his religious beliefs. Mindy, I think that is so important. You see a lot of people feel helpless and the reality is they are not helpless. I mean, um if you wanna see how quickly Javi Lobby Irrespective of Supreme Court justices' decision, uh, the, the decision is, the, the, the decision is just uh, just boycott that store, and you see what happens. Let that let there be a successful petition on that store, and watch their margins fall. Immediately thereafter, it will be amazing how different they view religion if that were to occur. Another method is to, you know, for folks to simply, I mean, right now we're in difficult em uh, employment time. But as the economy improves, people leave the company. Get out of there. Let it be problematic for them to find employees. Or they will find employees as they raise their prices for what I would call the religious premium for working for that company. Because nobody will work for them unless they, are, they, they make the amount of money uh, that they make from these folks lucrative enough that irrespective of what they do healthcare wise the, the whoever decides to work for them are better off folks remember this is a call in show 646 a lot of you listening not many of you call in 646 929 2495 again that number is 646 929 2495 i would love to hear from you i'd love to hear your perspective on on Mindy Smoke's uh, uh letter or or essay uh whatever uh, actually article is I think that they said uh, it's really um, turning quite a bit on the internet at, at this time very important article very prescient article on what's going on and on how women feel or not only women but how we should all feel about that Supreme Court decision 
that Hobby Lobby case and what it actually means. John, you have anything else that you want to say? We're coming close to the, uh, the end of the show. Yeah, I want to talk about the, how it's going to affect uh, in two, 2014. Uh, you know, we oh, there's a lot of talk, a lot of pressure is being put on Judge Ginsburg, who, in my opinion, is the, the best uh, Supreme Court justice, uh, about her retiring because the possibility that the, the Republicans could take uh, the Senate, and they wouldn't allow anybody to be confirmed in the last two years of Obama's term, which I think is, you know, basically if that happens, that that's about a hundred percent chance that that is going to happen. That's a start we'll just yes, yeah. right. And so they they want her to retire now and get get a new, uh, you know, uh, somebody who's a little bit more progressive in the court, uh, in, just in case that happens. Now, I mean, it's just so ridiculous that we have to come to that point. I mean, if we actually had, you know, like uh, when they were interviewing Roberts, they were actually having somebody that would just – what he talked about was just says, I'm just going to call balls and strikes. In other words, I'm not going to let ideology get in the way. Now, I understand that you can't do that 100%. But what we have here now is the most ideological Supreme Court, the most pro-corporate and pro-business Supreme Court, uh, like they said, ever. it could be ever, it could be you know, uh, prior to the New Deal. I mean, that the New Deal uh, and the people in the 30s, that was a very pro, pro-business pro court around then also. But, I mean, it, it's just a shame that, that people can't you know, judge a case on its merits. You know, uh, it, and so that's that's why uh, you know if if they if the Republicans do take the Senate, yeah, you know, it's it's all over with. I mean, you know, the only thing that uh, I mean, the Democrats do have demographics to look forward to, and that that is you know I'm very hopeful about that. So over the long term and over the medium term. You know, I, I expect these things to get overturned, just like Plessy versus Ferguson was overturned by Board uh, uh, Brown versus the Board of Education. But you know, this shouldn't be. This is not legitimate at all, and this should be overturned as quickly as possible. And I am very surprised uh, by. I mean, the opinion polls vary quite a bit, but it wasn't like Citizens United. Citizens United was overwhelmingly against the decision to where now the you know the, some of the polls are actually think that you know majority think that it was a good opinion i mean it's very mixed but uh i i just i just don't understand it and uh, mindy has mindy did write an excellent article so i i really uh really think it's great and uh and i i just hope that you know people understand that this is not it is very, very political, and this court is 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 not a conservative court because the conservatives want to to uh, you know have maintain the status quo. This this Supreme Court, the Roberts Five, really what they want to do is is go back to the era of the robber barons, and that's what they're doing. And it's it's you know they, I think I used the term uh, Pandora's box I think around four times on Monday night, oh, but I mean this it's it's happening you know in case after case and it's you know it's just it I, I don't well we're the, we're going to do something John um, John we're going to do something about it well let me get back to Jack Golden Jack I'd like you to give me a fifteen to twenty second closing statement. And then I'm going to go to Mindy and then to you, John, and then we're going to close out our hour. So, Jack, you are on the okay. air. Please give me your quick closing statement. Fifteen seconds, my friend. Yeah, I can do it in fifteen seconds. Uh, okay, I got a slogan here, and it's been uh, blogging to uh, nine different places, and it's called this: uh, the way to fi- to fight extremism is to become a militant moderate. That's what I am, and I think the term should be used uh, by anybody who is not on a right, extreme right, or extreme left. The extreme left has not been a problem too much, but uh, extreme right uh, has been a dog whistle crowd. 
become well, thank a you, militant Jack, for that. moderate. Thank you very much for that prescient statement, senor. Okay, let me go to uh, Mindy. Mindy, why don't you give me a quick closing statement? Yeah, it is. Um, I wanted to thank you, first of all, for having me on and having the and posting the article. And, you know, I just encourage people to really think about the consequences of a decision like this beyond, um, you know, just the immediate, like someone said, it was, you know, they talked about, oh, it's just these four methods. The next day, six other, they said it applied to six other companies that covered almost all forms of birth control. And, you know, somebody did post on a Facebook thing that said, oh, it's only these four methods. Women have other methods where they can do other things. And my thing to think about is what if someone just carried that to one of the four things you needed to save your life or the life of a loved one or to improve their health or improve their quality of life? It's much bigger than just the four pieces of contraceptive that were part of that initial decision. I just hope people can think of the bigger implications of private companies being able to use religious beliefs to make policies on how they're going to treat their employees. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you very much for calling in. Thank you very much for that most excellent piece as well. John, give me a quick uh, 30 seconds. Okay, I just want to talk about what Alito said at a federal uh, Federalist Society dinner in 2012. He said, the Obama administration is promoting a vision of society which the, the federal government towers over people. Uh, uh, Alito's class at Princeton was the last all-male class at the university when Alito was angled for a promotion during the, Mies, the reagan Meese Justice Department in 1985. He bragged that he was a proud member of the conservative alumni of Princeton, a group that aggressively fought the university's efforts to diversify its student body by accepting more women and people of color. So, you know, just get out there and, you know, Go vote. Voting is the most effective thing. What Mindy said was everything she said was correct. You know, boycott, uh, right. You know, call into shows like this. Uh, just do all you can to express your opinion about how incredibly negative and just how wrong on the on the merits this this decision is. You know, it because on the merits this, you know, what overturning, uh, you know giving this religious people saying that religious uh, employers have their religious uh, right to overturn what the government has passed in a law is just so you know extreme and that, that I, I just I, I, I can hardly believe it I mean, even though it's been already five days and uh, you know it is encouraging though that like going on daily codes and it's still the main topic that everybody's talking about and I hope it is for you know weeks and weeks to come. Uh, so because this is you know this extremism taken taken to the outer limit, and uh, also this is what we if somehow uh, you know Republicans gain power to where they have the House and the Senate and the presidency, you know look for the. Uh, the, the social uh, contract to be eliminated. Look for the safety net to be cut down drastically if not eliminated. This is just step one. Right now they control the courts, and they're doing these extreme 